Hello, thank you for watching and welcome to this series devoted to applying conservative exegesis to biblical texts relevant to the topic of hell. Since hell is an English word and not Hebrew or Greek, and since it may or may not correspond to a variety of different Hebrew and Greek words, and especially since theology is not done best at a mere word level, this study will focus on answering a broader question. Instead of just asking which verses have the word hell in them and what do I think they mean, the question should be, what view emerges when one asks the question, what does the whole counsel of scripture say about what happens to the unrepentant, unredeemed wicked? After all, if you think of it, if one of the main messages of Christianity is that Jesus saves, then we should know what he saves us from. Welcome back to Every Verse on Hell. Today we're not really going to be focusing on a specific book. Um, we're going to be focusing on the phrase, second death, found in the Targums. Now, Targums are Aramaic paraphrases of the Old Testament. I guess a, a rough analogy would be like the message version of the Bible by Eugene Peterson. Um, <clears throat> and the Targums would be something that probably Jews around the time of Jesus would have in their possession or hear or learn from or, or study from. So it's relevant in the cultural slash religious milieu of Jesus' day. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of the work published by J. David Woodington from the Theology Department of University of Notre Dame. What he does is he found a bunch of references to the phrase second death in the Targums, which, which may be helpful because when you approach the book of Revelation, any kind of clue you, you can get your hands on may be helpful because it's a difficult book to interpret. Now, twice, both once both by John and by God, um, they refer to the final end of the wicked as a second death. Now, we're going to get more into that when we get to the book of Revelation, but I just wanted to show you that between the Testaments, there was this body of literature referred to as the Targums that includes references to the second death, and we'll see what they mean in those contexts. So, we have here in Deuteronomy 33, at the bottom uh, from the ESV, verse 6 says, Let Reuben live and not die, but let his men be few. This is, from, this is Moses speaking. Okay, but in Targum Onkelos, uh, we read, May Reuben live an everlasting life and not die a second death. So, this is clearly meant to mean the same thing as the Masoretic text's meaning from Deuteronomy 33, verse 6. The Targums, I don't believe, have a reputation for diverging in meaning. They do, they do change the wording because it's a paraphrase, uh, just like the message is... Uh, a paraphrase. So here we have everlasting life correspond to live and to die a second death corresponding to die. Okay. Next, um, we are in the same verse, but now we're in a, a Targum called Targum Neophyti. I am probably didn't say that right. May Reuben live in this world and not die in the second death in which the wicked die in the world to come. <clears throat> So the wicked are expected to, in the world to come, so the eschaton, die again. And uh, Moses' blessing is that Reuben would live and not die the second time in the world to come. Now we're going to go to uh, Jeremiah 51, verse 57. Uh, again, at the bottom, we're in the ESV version from the Hebrew Masoretic text. It says, I will make drunk her officials and her wise men, her governors, her commanders, and her warriors. They shall sleep a perpetual sleep and not wake, declares the king whose name is the Lord of hosts. Okay, so this punishment involves them sleeping and not getting up. <clears throat> Metaphorical for death, I believe. Now, the Targum, Jeremiah, of the same verse says, They shall die the second death and shall not live for the world to come. So in Targum Jeremiah, the phrase second death means not being alive in the eschaton. Um, so this corresponds to being in a perpetual sleep, not waking. Okay? Uh, now we're going to go to Isaiah 65, verses 5 to 6. Um, same process. Down below I have the ESV from the Masoretic text. Uh, okay, so there's we're talking about people... 
who are going to be punished eventually, who say, keep to yourself, do not come near me, for I'm too holy for you. There, there are a smoke in my nostrils, that's what God says, a fire that burns all the day. Behold, it is written before me. I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their lap. Well, the text of Targum Isaiah for that same section says that God will hand over there, referring to the wicked people's bodies, to the second death. Um, I'm not going to make an argument that that's very clear what that means, except that it's a reference to their bodies dying a second time in punishment. Um, now we're going to go to Isaiah 66, next chapter, verse 24. The ESV says, And they shall go out and look on the dead bodies of the men who have rebelled against me, for their worm shall not die, their fire shall not be quenched, and they shall be an abhorrence to all flesh. I have done some studies in previous videos on what it means that the worm shall not die, that the fire shall not be quenched, and that there shall be an abhorrence to all flesh. The abhorrence to all flesh, um, you can see a comparison to Daniel 12 too, so go to the Daniel video. Fire shall not be quenched, just real quick, is a reference to the fire being unstoppable. There's no semantic connection to how long it burns. It's just that it's like an unstoppable tank. It doesn't mean that the tank doesn't have a parking gear. It just means that you couldn't forcibly stop it. Um, unquenchable fire happens frequently in the Old Testament. And it's always a reference to something that's going to be destroyed with no ability for you to stop it. So like the gates of Jerusalem, palaces and forests in Jerusalem, you see that in Jeremiah. And you see unquenchable fire destroying also in Ezekiel. Um, but let's see what Targum Isaiah says for the same verse. The wicked shall not die, nor their fire be extinguished, until the righteous will say, we have seen enough. Um, so there's, there's again this reference to dying. Uh, it's not a, quote, second death, but it's uh, a reference... It's a connection between this fire and worms seen in Isaiah 66, just to this idea of them dying in the eschaton, which is already clear in verse 24 because they're dead bodies. But I, it's close enough to the idea of second death that I included it. Okay, one more. Um, <clears throat> this is from Psalm 49. Verse 11, the bottom, we're in the ESV, their graves are their homes forever, their dwelling places to all generations, though they called lands by their own names. Okay, so this is people being in the grave forever as their dwelling place. Now in the Targums, we see that one shall see the wise ones of wickedness who die the second death. And this is them being judged in Gehenna. Gehenna is a transliteration Hebrew to Greek, and then I guess to English, because, anyway. Um, <clears throat> a place of slaughter, eschatological slaughter, um, that is also referred to in Jeremiah, uh, that there will be so many dead bodies that people will have to bury their dead in Topheth. And anyway, this valley, of the sons of Gihon, um, will be referred to as a valley of slaughter. So this is a place where, eschatologically speaking, God's going to be killing his enemies. Anyway, so the wise ones of wickedness uh, who die the second death are going to be judged in Gehenna. So that's just a reference to one of the ways that Jesus refers to final punishment is Gehenna in the Gospels, which, by the way, we're going to be coming up on pretty soon because um, we're pretty much wrapping up the Old Testament here. I don't know if I'd count this or not. The Targums, do with it what you will, but literally, 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 and religiously, this is pretty good context for the for John's work, the Revelation, uh, because he uses the phrase second death twice. Well, he, he uses it, and then God uses it. Anyway, so I appreciate you watching this. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Bye.